So many times people are wanting to add receptacles or outlets somewhere in a room, but they don't have a convenient place to tap into in order to get power going to that new outlet. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that I go about adding electrical outlets to rooms that don't already have one or are wanting to add one that is more convenient. I'm not only gonna show you how I go about doing it, but I'm also gonna go over some huge mistakes that I've seen people do in the past that you really want to avoid because they do create some very dangerous situations. And then at the end of the video, we'll test out our lights and also our electrical outlet to make sure that they're working independently of each other. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I'm gonna show you how easily this can be done by using my mock-up wall here. Now this isn't just a dead wall, I actually have power flowing to it. So if I turn on this light switch, the light comes on and this is the light switch we're going to be using and I'm going to be demonstrating on in order to show you how I go about doing this in real world applications. But in order to get started with this, the first thing that we always want to do, as is the case with any electrical project, is we want to go ahead and make sure that the power is turned off that is going on this circuit. And the way that we do that is going to the circuit breaker panel and turning off the circuit breaker that supplies the power to this light switch. All right, so now that, that circuit breaker is off, a couple of ways that we can go about testing this is we can now go and turn the light switch on and see if the light comes on, which it doesn't. However, the best way to make sure that the power has been turned off is to remove the cover from the light switch. And then once that cover has been removed from the light switch, I can go about testing it using either a multimeter or a voltage tester, or some people feel comfortable using a non-contact voltage detector, which in most cases that will probably work, but I would say that it is not necessarily the recommended way of doing it as they sometimes are not fully accurate. All right, so now that the power is off, this is then when you would want to figure out where you want to put your new box in order to install your new receptacle. Now, as you can see, I've already got my hole cut out here and it is pretty much right below where the light switch is. This is going to be the easiest way of going about doing this because then we don't have to mess with going between stud bays. We don't have to worry about drilling through anything, but this would be very easy to figure out where this can go. You'd want to take a stud finder and figure out which side of your light switch the stud is on. And then you have an idea for where your stud is and then how much room, depending on which side, as to where then you can put your hole. Then once you figure out where that stud is and where you want your hole to go, I typically just take the box, put it up against the wall, trace all the way around it, and then I take a drywall or jab saw and cut that hole out. Then once I've got my hole made, I'm gonna leave it empty. And now I'm gonna remove my light switch from the box and this will give me more room to work with. All right, so now it's at this point where I would wanna take my new wiring and I want to run my new wiring from my switch box down to my hole for my new outlet. And there are numerous ways that you could go about doing this. But one thing I like to do on non-insulated walls when I'm doing this is a lot of times I'll use this. This is a chain and I have found this to work incredibly well in numerous instances when I'm pulling new wire into a wall. The reason I like using this so much is once I get it through the holes in the original box, gravity is just going to pull that chain straight down like so. And so it's going to be very easy for me to locate it. All right. So the way that I go about doing this is I take my new wiring. I take my chain. I overlap my chain onto my wiring, probably at least three or four inches. And then once I've got that in place and overlapped, I then take some electrical tape and I just start wrapping it all the way around the wiring and the chain multiple times all the way up until the end. And by wrapping it that much, it ensures that when we're going and pulling this in the wall, that our chain does not separate from the wiring. All right. So now that I've got that all set up. I'll take the end of my chain here and I'm going to feed it into this box into one of the holes that's in the back. Now that I can see that chain through that hole, I can go ahead and grab it and feed it through the rest of the way. And then just keep feeding my wire through that hole and eventually we're going to start pulling it through the bottom hole just like that. And now at this point I can install my new electrical box. Now these are not called new electrical boxes. These are actually called old work electrical boxes. But like always, for your convenience, I'll have links for this along with all of the other materials and tools that you're going to see in this video. I'll have links for everything down in the description down below. When you click on those links, it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on. So you can check all this out for yourself. So now all I need to do is take my junction box, run my wiring down into that junction box, and then just pull it out and feed it out to the front of that box. Now that I've got that fed through, I can now push my box into the wall and then take a screwdriver and then tighten down each one of the screws. Tighten those down until we're getting a good amount of resistance. And now our box is installed and firmly in place. 
Now, as far as this wiring goes, I wanna make sure that I've got at least six inches of wiring coming out from the back of the box and extending out to the front. And then I also wanna make sure that that six inches is enough by making sure that there's at least three inches of wiring coming out from the front portion of the box, which we have. And then I wanna do the same thing up here at the top, make sure I've got at least six inches coming out from the back of the box, three inches past the front, and then I'm just gonna cut it off at that point. So now I wanna get my protective sheathing removed from my wires here so that they're exposed and I can work with them. And I wanna make sure that I cut the sheathing off all the way back to the back of the box just after where it enters in. And I can very easily do that by using the sheathing stripper right here. These aren't very expensive and they can really cut down on a lot of time when stripping the sheathing. And it also helps to protect and keep those wires safe from accidental cuts using say a knife for instance. All right, so now that we've got our wiring running from box to box and we've got our sheathing removed, now it's time to start actually hooking things up. So the first thing that I wanna install and hook up is gonna be our new outlet down below. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is make sure that all of my wires are stripped so that I can then connect it to my new receptacle. All right, so now that the wires are stripped, now I need to make some J-hooks so they can wrap around the terminal screws on the receptacle, and I can easily do that by using my wire strippers like this. So I'll go ahead, start with the ground wire, wrap it around my green ground screw down here at the bottom, and we wanna make sure that when we wrap it around that screw and any of the screws, that they're wrapping around in a clockwise direction. This is going to help promote the wiring being pulled in closer to the center of that screw and make for a very long lasting and good connection. And make sure that's down nice and tight. Next wire I wanna connect is my white neutral wire. And I'll just again, wrap that around that terminal screw in a clockwise direction and then tighten it down. All right, so last but certainly not least is our black line wire. Now on the white neutral wire, we put it over here on these silver colored terminal screws. For the black line wire or hot wire, they go over here on the brass colored screws or they might look gold to you. So again, I just wrap it around in that clockwise direction and then tighten it down. So now I can push all the wiring into the back of the box and screw down this receptacle into that new box. But if you're like me and wanna get things done as quickly as possible, I like to always use my electric screwdriver when I can. Now, one thing to also quickly note is, do you see these ears that are on the receptacle? Since I'm installing this into an old work box, you should snap those off so that this receptacle sits down nice and flush and when you put the cover plate on, there isn't a gap. Whereas if I leave these ears on and I put the cover plate on, there's gonna be a slight gap between the cover plate and the wall. So this is not a permanent installation for me, so I'm not gonna snap those off, but I did wanna note that because when you use one of these old work boxes like this, those ears absolutely need to be snapped off and that can be very easily done just using some needle nose pliers and twisting them back and forth. And eventually they'll just snap right off and everything will be nice and flush. Whereas you'd wanna leave these ears on if you were installing into a new work box because those ears are what then go up against the drywall itself and keep that receptacle from being sunken in. So then once that receptacle is installed, those ears are snapped off if they need to be, then I'll just take my cover plate and then install it. And so now the electrical outlet is wired up and installed. So now this, is where things get very interesting and where I've seen people make some just really bad mistakes and create fire hazard type situations. And that's when it comes to then connecting all of these wires to the ones that are existing. But before I do anything with wiring anything up here, one thing I am going to need to know is if I flip this switch over here to the right side, I need to know which one is the hot wire or bringing the power in. And once I figure that out, then I'll need to disconnect that wire from this switch and then I'll show you what I'll do with it. So the only way to go about doing this and it needs to be done very carefully is I need to go ahead and turn the circuit breaker back on that supplies the power to this light switch. Now that the circuit breaker is back on I'll just test really quickly to make sure the light comes on which it does so the power is back on going here so this is live. So I'm going to take my voltage detector here turn it on I'm going to go ahead and take my first probe put it over here on the ground screw over on the left side then I'll take my other probe and I'll touch it to one of these terminal screws on the right side and figure out which one is hot. Once it touches the wire that's hot, this light right here should illuminate. All right, so as you can see here, this bottom terminal screw is the one that has the hot wire on it. I'll go ahead just for the sake of it and touch the top one. And as you can see, it's dead. Now, if this was in the on position, then you would get 120 volts, just like you would in the bottom. So you always wanna make sure the switch is off. That way, you know you're isolating it and you know that you're getting the correct wire. All right, so now that I know which terminal screw has the hot wire attached to it, I'm gonna go ahead, turn the circuit breaker back off. And now again, just make sure that that power is in fact turned off. 
All right, so I wanna go ahead, loosen up that screw where my hot wire is. All right, so now this is where some people will just make a very big mistake and create a very serious safety hazard. I've now loosened up my screw where my hot wire is. A lot of people don't know how you should hook this up. And a lot of people are just used to like daisy chaining. And so what some people will do is they'll take their new wiring. Once they've located where the hot wire is, they'll put a J hook on their new wiring. So like this, and without removing the hot wire that's already around this screw, they'll take their new wiring and then they'll also then just take that new wire and stack it on top of the wire that's already there and installed and then they will tighten it down this is not only against code this is also very very dangerous because when you stack those wires even if you tighten this down what you think is enough because those two wires are together over time they can very easily move and when those wires move eventually one is going to slip and then can come loose in the box and if one wire comes loose from that sand which that was created, then the other wire is also going to be able to be loose and then just free in a box, which could create all kinds of issues, whether it's a short circuit or even a fire. So never, ever, ever double stack a terminal screw just so that you can tap into the current that is going to it. This is just not the way that this should be done. This is completely illegal and unnecessary. All right, so now what I want to do now that that's all loosened up is I actually want to remove my hot wire from the light switch. So let's go ahead and start wiring all this up. All right, so I'm gonna start with my ground wire here. Well, now we need to connect our new ground wire to those other grounds. Now, what we could do is just remove this wire nut and then we could just take our new ground wire, bunch all these up together, and then put them back underneath of not this wire nut, but get a new wire nut and put them all underneath of that one wire nut. That is an option. Since this is a low amperage situation, another option that I think is very good for this, especially for DIYers, is to use a WAGO connector. So the way that these work are they've got these levers on them, they just flip up. Then you can take your wire that you wanna connect and then just insert it into that port where the lever is flipped up, flip it over over to the bottom, you can see clearly that it is all the way up to the top here. And then once you see that, then you can just flip that lever down and now that wire is connected. And we're just gonna do the same thing with our remaining ground wires. So now just like that and as easy as that, all of my ground wires are now connected. So now I can push that into the back of the box. All right, so now all of our ground wires are connected. So now we're gonna move on to hooking up our white neutral wire to our new receptacle. And it's kind of the same thing as the grounds. You're oftentimes going to have another wire nut and wires in the back of the box. They're all bundled together underneath of one wire nut like this. So I'll just pull that out. So kind of the same thing as we did with the grounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that wire nut. So same exact thing, flip up the levers and I'm gonna insert each wire one by one and flipping the lever down on each one of those wires as I insert them into this WAGO connector. So now all my neutrals are connected together. So now I'm left with two wires. My hot wire here that I took off of the light switch that's supplying the power and my new black wire that's going to my receptacle. We need to get power flowing to this wire so that receptacle can be powered. But how do we do that and then also attach it to this light switch so the light switch can be powered and then to the fixture? Well, this is very easy to do and a lot of people overlook it and that's by using a pigtail just like is being used with the ground wire on this light switch. And in this case, I'm gonna need one end that's straight. And then I've also made a J hook here. And the reason I made a J hook here is because this pigtail is what's gonna actually supply the power to this light switch and then ultimately the light fixture. So I need to have a J hook on here so I can attach it to the switch. Now I'm gonna take my new WAGO connector with the levers already up. I'm just gonna insert each one of my black wires that are in this box, then flip the lever down on each one of them. I personally always like to put my hot wire in the middle of these levers connectors in the middle slot. I just feel like maybe it's just in my head. It helps distribute the power better. And then I'll flip that down. And now I'll take my pigtail and insert it into that last port. Flip that lever down. And so now, as you can see, our hot wire, which is this one in the middle, is now supplying the power to these two new wires. This one going onto the receptacle and this one then going to the light switch. So now I can push those into the back of the box, bring my light switch around, flip it over here to the side. And now I'll take that J hook on that pigtail that is now connected to the hot wire, wrap it around that terminal screw again in a clockwise direction, and then tighten it down. All right, so now everything is wired up on the switch, so now I can push everything to the back, tighten down my light switch into the box again. 
and then I can put the switch plate back in on top and just tighten down the two screws. Now, before I show you testing out the switch to make sure it's still working, and then also testing out the new receptacle, another option that is available that some people might want to use instead of running all new wiring and installing a new receptacle, depending on how you care about looks, another option that is out there is this switch receptacle combo right here. And I do have a video installing this and testing this already on the channel that I will link at the end of this video so you can see more about it if you would like to. And now that that circuit breaker is back on, I'm first gonna test out the new outlet. I'm gonna do that by using this outlet tester here. If everything is wired up properly, this green light will light up. We'll see that it has 120 volts and we won't see any errors here on the screen. So I'll go ahead, plug it in. And as you can see, we're getting that green light and it's showing 121, 122 volts. So that's perfectly fine right around that 120 volts. And it also says that everything is wired up correctly. So now I'll just pull that out. Now I'll insert it into the top one. And as you can see, same thing, green light, 121, 122 volts. And it says everything is wired up correct. So outlet tester makes it super easy to make sure everything was wired up properly and also gives you some readings as to what you're getting. So the new receptacle is working and wired up properly, but did we mess up anything within the lights? So moment of truth here to make sure that our lights are still working independently of our receptacle. As you can see, I left my outlet tester in that receptacle. The green light is on. That is showing you that even though the lights are not on, the switch is not on, that outlet is still receiving power and working properly. So all I need to do in order to test the lights is turn on the switch. And as you can see, the light has come on. So this is demonstrating that the lights and the receptacle are in fact working independently of each other, which ultimately is the goal for this installation. And as you saw, as I went through everything and pointed some things out, that it was relatively easy and quick to do. Now, one thing to just really quickly note is, because I get a lot of questions about this on projects like this, is where do I get my materials and tools from? And like I mentioned a little bit earlier, for your convenience, I'll have links for everything you saw in this video. From all the materials and tools that I use to make this installation possible, I'll have links for everything down in the video's description description right down below, where when you click on those links, it'll take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check them all out for yourself. Now, if you found value in this video, then you'll definitely find value in some videos that I did in the past where I go about adding some light switch and outlet combos. I do it in a couple of different ways and I show you step by step how I did them. If those would be of interest to you, you'd like some other ideas on how some people go about doing this, then all you have to do is click on one of these two videos right over here, whichever one appeals to you the most. And once you click on one of those videos, it will take you directly to it. But I hope that you found value in this video. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.